This week at Starbase, stacking begins for the first Block 3 booster, Ship 35 goes through another round of testing, engines are installed on Ship 36, and the chopsticks at Pad B are put through several rounds of load testing. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week, on Friday morning, two motors for cryogenic pumps at the tank farm arrived at Starbase and were brought into the launch complex for offload. The same afternoon, the booster transport stand was brought onto Highway 4 and returned to the launch complex after being removed from the site late the night before. This was a clear indication that SpaceX's plans had changed and Booster 14 was going to need to be removed from the mount before Flight 9. A prefabricated section of cryogenic piping was also brought to the launch complex and taken towards the D4 gate for offload. Late that afternoon, the ship quick disconnect arm over at Pad A was swung out away from the launch tower as preparations continued for the removal of the flight proven super heavy from the mount. A few hours later, the chopsticks were moved into position, rising up to the lifting points on booster 14. The rocket was then lifted off the mount and transferred to the awaiting stand. In the early hours of Saturday morning, the booster now secured to the transport stand was rolled out onto Highway 4 as it headed back to the build site. This return signified that SpaceX had encountered some kind of significant issue with the Super Heavy, possibly when it was placed onto the mount. Shortly before dawn, the rocket was moved back into Mega Bay 1. Several hours later, it was lifted onto the building's back left work stand to allow crews access to address whatever issue cropped up and stands in the way of Flight 9. Meanwhile, a new prefabricated valve assembly was delivered to the launch complex. The article was then brought over towards the flame trench and offloaded next to the gantry. The next morning, a second new prefabricated assembly was also delivered to the pad. By that evening, it was lifted and lowered next to the gantry for installation. On Monday morning, Booster 18's common dome section emerged from Star Factory and was taken over to Mega Bay 1. This marks the start of the stacking of this latest booster, the first of the Block 3 Super Heavies. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, a section of Ship 38's liquid oxygen tank was brought out of Star Factory and taken to Mega Bay 2 for stacking as the latest Starship continues to grow. Overnight, two vacuum raptors were moved into Mega Bay 2 from the raptor's nest on the back side of the booster bay. Presumably, these were for installation on Ship 36, indicating that SpaceX is gearing up for the vehicle's static fire campaign. Wednesday saw a steady stream of water deliveries to the launch complex as SpaceX looks to load up the Deluge farm at Pad A in preparation for the upcoming Flight 9. Closer to Highway 4, another section of High Bay Wall was lowered to the ground as demolition of the building continues at a steady pace. By lunchtime, Ship 35 had been secured to the static fire stand and emerged from Mega Bay 2. The Flight 9 Starship was then rolled onto Highway 4 for yet another trip to the Massey Outpost. Following another engine swap on the vehicle, SpaceX needed another round of testing to ensure the ship was now ready for launch. Meanwhile, yet another section of High Bay was lowered to the ground. First thing on Thursday morning, propellant loading got underway at the Massey Outpost. The ship was filled with a partial load of cryogenics and eventually detanked, with no visible signs of engine tests having occurred. At the launch complex, the pile rig was relocated to the near end of the Pad B flame trench. Once in position, the crews got back to work drilling and filling new concrete piles. Later that morning, up the road at the build site, the next section of Booster 18's liquid oxygen tank was moved from Star Factory over to Mega Bay 1 as construction on the next generation Super Heavy continued. That afternoon, crews continued to work on the new end wall of the Star Factory. Sections of cladding were removed, the structure of the parpet added, and then the new cladding installed. That evening, Ship 35 was once again loaded with propellant. This time, with a full liquid oxygen and partial methane load, the Flight 9 Starship performed a spin prime test, verifying that it's ready to fly. The timing was perfect, as just hours earlier the FAA had announced that SpaceX was now approved for the next launch of the Starship program. Throughout the week, crews performed certification testing on the Pad B chopsticks. On Friday morning, the specialized load spreader, already holding the empty water bags, was lifted and placed onto the tower's arms. That afternoon, the chopsticks were raised slightly and the bags filled with water. Once the bags were full, the arms were raised to the top of the launch tower, rotated and began lowering. 
After pausing to rotate one more time at about the midpoint, the chopsticks were lowered back to the bottom of the tower. On Saturday, the water bags were filled again and the arms raised up to the top of the launch tower. The arms were held there for several hours before slowly dropping back down to the base. Once there, the water bags were drained and the load spreader was removed from the arms. On Sunday, the load spreader once again lifted and installed onto the arms of Mechazilla 2. This time, the long straps were attached to the spreader instead of the water bags. Throughout the day, the chopsticks were slowly raised up the tower, with additional straps being added as they climbed to just a bit past the halfway point. The next day, it was back to work and the chopsticks once again began moving up the tower. As the arms neared the top, the water bags finally came into view, hanging from the bottom of the long straps. Once they saw that the bags were at the right height, they lowered back towards the ground briefly. A short time later, the arms were raised again and rotated so the bags suspended above the recently installed launch mount. The next morning, the bags were partially filled with water before being drained again. Eventually, the chopsticks rotated, then the bags were lowered back towards the ground. On Wednesday, what appeared to be new shackles were delivered to the launch site and later the chopsticks were adjusted up and down slightly. This could be an indication that some of the hardware involved in the testing was swapped out. Testing picked back up on Thursday, with the chopsticks raising back to the top of the tower, bringing the water bags back into view. The arms then rotated back over to the launch mount. By mid-afternoon, water began flowing into the bags, eventually filling them. The load then hung from the arms for several hours before the water was drained. Switching over to Florida, the Space Coast saw a steady stream of Starlink-related action this week. On Friday morning, Doug and a short fall of Gravitas both returned to port with the fairing halves and booster 1090 from the Starlink Group 6-67 mission. The booster was offloaded that afternoon for dockside processing before its return to Roberts Road. On Saturday, just read the instructions was towed out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 12-15 mission. Late Tuesday night, the launch lifted off from Complex 40, carrying 23 satellites to low Earth orbit. And two days later, Bob returned to Port Canaveral with both of the recovered fairing halves. Also on Thursday, a short fall of Gravitas was towed out to sea, followed several hours later by Doug, as the vessels prepared to support the Starlink Group 12-22 launch. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. If everything goes as planned, we'll see you live from Rocket Ranch on Tuesday for Flight 9. If not, we'll see you next Sunday. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.